If you lose someone close to you, how can we be sure their spirit is still with us? There's no hard and fast proof I can give you. This isn't a place where it's about, okay, you know, we'll call forth their spirit, and if they're really here, they're going to, you know, move my water glass or turn off the fans or, you know, do something else that's irrefutable. But here's the thing. We've developed a, a real tragic lack of faith in our own ways of knowing and a handing over of all of our ways of knowing to others, mostly to, to science and to the physical world. So if someone can show me something, I believe it. If they can prove it to me, I'll believe it. But if I feel it inside, but not with one of my five senses, and I can't, I can't demonstrate it or prove it using any of the methodology that we have. It doesn't weigh something. I can't measure it. You can't see it in a microscope or a telescope. It doesn't have a pulse. Then I doubt myself. I doubt that knowledge that doesn't line up with my five senses or the tools that science has given us. And that, I believe, is a very, very serious and grave disservice that we do to ourselves because the vast majority of experiences that are precious and that change and transform us are those that aren't of the five senses. My favorite is love, right? Do you love someone today? Anyone? Whether they're living or dead? Prove it. Yeah, you can't, right? I didn't mean to stump you publicly, but you can't. You could certainly say, well, I do this for this person. But that doesn't prove love. It could prove you feel compelled. It could prove you want something from them. It could prove that you've got, you know, an inferiority complex. I mean, there, there's all, all kinds of ways we could psychoanalyze that other than love. You cannot prove the existence of love. And yet, everyone who's ever felt it knows that it's real. The lack of our ability to prove it. I mean, me saying to you, prove it, and you knowing that you can't prove it, doesn't diminish the fact that you know you love, right? I mean, you don't suddenly start doubting the love because you can't prove it to me. It just makes you a little puzzled. But that's, that's because we know and we trust. God, spirituality, your true self, the soul. Well, none of this weighs anything or measures anything or is visible under a you know, microscope or in a telescope. Can't prove any of that to me. The best you can do is prove the effect. So you can say, well, God must exist because, look, we have this earth. But there are scientists who would refute that. There's a lot of scientific debate that goes on about that. It's not a 100% unanimous agreement that just because we have an earth, therefore, by default, there must be a God who created it. I believe there is, but I couldn't, I couldn't prove it to someone. And I, I give you all of these examples because... When you lose someone who is very close to you, who you love, you can still feel them with you. 
not with your fingertips, but inside you. I know you can, even before you shake your head. Because everyone can. Everyone who has ever lost someone they love can still feel them with you. The problem is our society tells you to get over it that you're crazy. They're gone. Move on. And I'm not, not, I'm not saying don't move on. I'm just saying they're not gone. But our, our minds get brainwashed into this, get over it, you're just crazy, you know, you've got to let them go, they're not here anymore, you know, forget about them. And so what happens then is when you do feel them, and sometimes even you hear them, sometimes even you could swear you saw them. The mind kicks in and says, oh my God, you're crazy. Oh my God, you haven't gotten over it. Better get you on some you know, medication for that. There's something wrong. And then it starts this whole mind game. The truth is, you know their spirits with you because you feel them with you. You don't need me to give you a way to prove that. You just need me to give you permission to trust yourself when it feels that they're still with you. And I'm happy to give you that. And you're surrounded by a world full of people who when they're courageous enough to sit in the space of not being able to prove it, of having the mind and the brain say, they're gone, get over it. But still, having the courage to sit with the truth that actually they still feel that person's presence. They all agree with you. Just because their soul has left their body doesn't remove them from our lives. They're still, they're still there. We still feel them. So hold on to that. And it's, you know, losing a loved one is probably the most tragic thing that happens to us in our life. I mean, dying yourself, at least you're dead, you're over. So it's, it's hard to call that too much of a tragedy for you. It's a tragedy for your loved ones. But you're not, you're not having any experience of the tragedy of your own death because you've You've died. So the greatest tragedy really in human life is the loss of those we love. And what it does is gives us the opportunity in our grief to actually go so much deeper within ourselves because you know they're still there. You can still feel them. And yet, you can't see them really with these eyes. If you see them, it's not with these eyes. You can't hear them with these ears. If you do hear them, it's not because, you know, your tympanic membrane vibrated a certain way and it sent a signal into the inner ear and up into the brain. You heard them through an inner ear. You saw them through an inner eye. And to stay connected to them rather than to push that away requires us to keep dropping in, which is actually a blessing. Not that losing them is a blessing, but the silver lining of the tragedy of losing them is the opportunity to go deeper within the self because that's the level on which we connect with them. This physical body is not going to connect with them. They no longer have that physical body. If you only can use these two eyes, you won't see them. But if you can go deep, you have the opportunity to keep seeing and hearing and feeling. And that doesn't mean you shouldn't move on. Of course you should move on. They've moved on. And their spirit is still here. It's a yes and, not an either or. It's both. Their spirit is here, 
but their form has changed so dramatically that you can't keep holding on. That form is gone. And so your only opportunity, your only option is to move on with an awareness that the form, form has changed. But the spirit of them is not gone. Their essence is not gone. Your love is not gone. That love is still within you. The love that was there, it's still there. And that's beautiful. And you should hold that. Because the nice thing about love is it's a constantly renewable resource. So you never have to worry that, oh my God, I've got love that still for the person who's passed away, is that going to be less love that I have now for new people? No. Constantly replenishes itself. The more you use, the more you get. So keep loving. Stay connected. And allow your inner love production factory to do its thing and you'll just keep making more love and being able to love more and more people without losing the love that you had for the person who passed away. And that love will help keep you connected to their spirit.